Next on BYU Sports Nation, how the BYU basketball program has changed one month into head coach Mark Pope's tenure. One of his assistants, Chris Burgess, makes his show debut. Can BYU football have a successful season if they go 1-3 and three in the first four games? Plus, Brock Hale runs home to Studio B in Grand Slam fashion. And very disciplined batter. That one hit the center field. Grand Slam! Wow. Let's go. This is BYU Sports Nation. Brought to you by the BYU Store. Simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Now from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B. Presented by the BYU Store. The official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Tuesday, May 14th. Wherever and however you're connected streaming great to have you with us i am spencer linton teamed up with a man who still owns at least one audio cassette tape jerem jordan i probably own 10 wow that many yeah uh, they're recordings of me on my mission trip okay okay yeah, yeah. relics I'll, yeah i need to convert those to a uh, digital format there's a simple way to do that i'm sure with technology <laughs> with techno yes <laughs> I'm sure there is. <laughs> Do you still own anything that I resembles can't play music? Them. Like, uh, uh, no, I could play them back on the thing I recorded them on. I, I, was, I don't have a uh, mu- No, I don't. Have, I was searching uh, through some old stuff in a box the other night, and I found a boys to men audio cassette tape. Nice. And I can't tell you how excited I was when I got that audio cassette tape. Oh, very exciting! You could just. Listen on Apple Music <laughs> oh, or Spotify. I, or I know that. I'm just saying, when you find the tape, like you, it, it takes you back to that moment when I was, I think I was 10, and I was like, "This is the greatest thing ever." Oh yeah, I remember uh, going to Fred Meyer in Portland and buying uh, like a TLC or Green Day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, Green Day '94 uh, Dookie album. Oh Bought yeah. That. yeah, oh yeah, that was yeah. Awesome. My mom's like, "Oh, he's going through a rebellious stage." Mom, <laughs> what? Green Day. <laughs> Come on. Well, I've seen them twice. Well, the uh, parental advisories have changed through the years. I mean, I think if I think if one curse word was said at any point in a cassette tape, I had a parental advisory on it when it first came out. Mm-hmm. So things are a little bit different now. Do we have parental advisory on this? I, I don't know. It's BYU TV. Let's hope not. Uh, seriously. <laughs> Here is today's family-friendly show lineup. Chris Burgess Always. from Utah to BYU. And he started at Duke as well. The BYU basketball assistant coach. In Studio B to make his show debut. Brock Kale, after two grand slams, will join us on the program and a brand new episode of Between the Lines. We now present today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. As we reported on BYU Sports Nation about a month ago, Jeff Goodman has confirmed that report that Yoli Childs tells Stadium Sports he will not return to BYU and will remain eligible for the NBA draft. Yeah, not shocking. He told us he was all in on the process, but we thought, may, you know, I think he thought maybe he'd get a combine invite or G League combine invite. Neither came, so there was the thought that perhaps he could come back, but as he mentioned, he's all in on the process. So three straight years in a row, the leading scorer leaves for a senior year for BYU. It's official Jackson Clough is the Collegiate Baseball Newspaper National Player of the Week, as well as the West Coast Conference Player of the Week. He batted 562 last week, six extra base hits, six ribbies on Saturday alone. He won it twice this season now. First yes. BYU player to ever do that. And BYU uh, for a National Player of the Week thing? Yeah. Well, there are more National Player of the Week awards in 2019. So that's, yeah. Uh, BYU at Utah tonight in baseball, 8 Eastern BYU Radio. Mary Lake made the 25-player cut-down roster yeah. for... Team USA Volleyball Nations League representing the red, white, and blue. She's one of two liberos on the squad. It'll be cut down to 14 for competition next week in Bulgaria. Additionally, the BYU women's volleyball recruiting class of 2019 ranked a program best fourth. That according to prepvolleyball.com. We're not playing big deal, no deal right now, but big deal on both. Huge deal. Really really big deal, which is really cool. And Carson Lundell helps BYU men's golf to fourth place after day one at the NCAA Regionals in Pullman. Hopefully Mike Leach was there. Lundell is six under par, tied for first among all competitors. 
Begins the second round earlier this morning, paired with golfers from Michigan State and UCLA. The top five teams advance. Hit them good, Carson. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. We're a month into the Mark Pulp era at BYU as the head coach of the basketball program. One month in, Jerem, how would you define Mark Pope's era at Brigham Young University? Energy, excitement, I think so far so good. Uh, nothing uh, super negative or surprising, right? Uh, good or bad, which, which is good. I, I guess there is something a little surprising, but again, we still can't talk about it, waiting for a certain player to become official, good in the grad school. The assistants are in place, still waiting on a director of basketball operations. We've heard about one high school signee and Trey Stewart, Two transfers from Utah Valley in uh, Wyatt Lowell and Richard Harward. Two releasings from NLIs, so decisions are being made. Um, Yoli Child's not coming back. That's basically official uh, today. We know BYU's hitting up Italy August 16th through the 26th. We're still kind of trying to get on that trip with them. I think so far, so good. There's, there's not been uh, anything super surprising. I think it's been positive. It's been good. Um, the only negative thing was Mark Pope's pitch into the dirt. Um, other than that... I think it's been pretty good so far. It made your first pitch, I mean the one way back, look pretty good actually. Okay. Again, no one mentions the second one, which was a strike. <laughs> Gary Shidey brought, brought, brought up your strike the second time around did during he really? a live baseball broadcast. I'm yes. surprised. Yes, he I'm did. I'm surprised since I called out Gary earlier this week that he, he would g- go there. He gave you credit. <laughs> he gave you I credit. I guess that was last week. The Mark Pope era, 34 days in, Jerem. It's about transfers, man. It's about transfers, and we anticipated this would be the case because he thrived at this at Utah Valley, but we wondered how it would translate to BYU because it's a little bit different here getting people admitted and into the program. Well, so far all these guys are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, right? It's it's not like some rando, right? No, but he's still got to recruit them and target them, and now they're at BYU. So to me, he's just busy. It's, an, it's a busy excitement. He is a busy dude. He's really, he's all over the place. We're trying to book him for a commercial. It's hard. He's so <laughs> busy. A busy bee, whatever you want to call it. Like Mark Pope. Busy beaver. I feel like he has uh, not a free minute in any day. Like The last five By weeks choice. have been absolutely insane for him. Yeah. And exactly, because he wants it that way. Yeah, and it's. Yeah, he, he's getting his feet wet, and, and uh, he's establishing a certain culture, and that culture is energy. And with ener- energy equals movement, right, in the physics realm. Like, you, kinetic energy, he's all about that, which is great. That's exciting, right? Um, wh- when it gets more difficult is when things go a little south. How do you react to that and whatnot? And there will be uh, some adversity at some point. But so far, I, re- I really like what's going on. We're going to talk to Chris Burgess, one of the assistant coaches as well. And it's good to have him at BYU. I'm happy he's here. Ian Harward, Wyatt Lowell. Richard Harward. Rich, sorry, Richard Harward. His brother Ian played here. Yes, 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 yes. Both coming as transfers. Trey Stewart, initially committed to UVU, now coming to BYU. And then perhaps something else coming down the pipeline. Well, not perhaps. It's happening. I We're know. just waiting. So the first, yeah, the first five weeks to me, it's, it's about transfers. And he's just really, really busy. We continue our open-heart surgery on the 2019 BYU football schedule, particularly (laughs) the first four of Utah at Tennessee, USC, and Washington. Sounds really easy. In SB Nation's preview of BYU by Bill Connolly, he simulated the first four games. Our friends on Twitter, at Cougar Stats, simulated these numbers 10,000 times and came up with the following first four win totals. Uh, 19% BYU gets zero wins. One win? 39%, 39%, two wins, 31%, three wins, 10%, and four wins is a whopping 0.1%. Great news. To which Utah Valley says to BYU, you can still win. So I submit this question, Spencer. Can BYU have a successful season if they start one and three? Which is the most likely st- statistical outcome? How do you define success? And the way that I define success is more wins than the previous season before. So, yes. Even if BYU starts one and three against that gauntlet, bringing back that word, I need to figure out a new name of a first four games. Yes, the Cougars can still have a successful season. Technically, BYU could still win ten games if they start one and three. Though with a one and three start, it's not likely they would win the remaining eight regular season games and yeah, then go and win crazy. a bowl game. Yeah. But technically, they could. If BYU wins seven games in the regular season, I think it's a step in the right direction. So, I'm Is it ca- successful? I'm calling that successful because it's mm. a step in the right direction. I think because BYU went 4-9, and nine, we've reset our expectations on, we absolutely on the program. Have. We absolutely have. And I think that you get what I'm saying now, which is the schedule's hard. We should adjust expectations. 
that's part of my thing. It isn't just that it's too hard. It's that, well, I guess then our expectations for how good the program can be need to go down. So I, I think it'd be tough because if you start one and three to get seven wins in the regular season, which would be the step forward, hopefully you get the bowl game. We don't know the opponent. That'd be eight and five. That'd be eight and five. I'll take eight and five. Would you call that a success? Yes. Uh, yes. Relative success, right? Based on the, the lower expectations. Yeah. How do you define it? Now, the question is, can BYU win six of the next eight if they go one and three? I will list the games. You tell me where there are wins. Okay. At Toledo, at South Florida, Boise State, at Utah State, Liberty, Idaho State, at UMass. Those are three wins. Mm-hmm. Mark it down. Mm-hmm. At San Diego State. So are there three other wins in those other five games? Yes. Perhaps, right? I, I think so. It'd be nice if BYU started at least two and two. Because now you set yourself up for an opportunity. You play three of the next four on the road. These are, some of these are tough. Some of these teams are going to be better than we think. Some will be worse. Some will be exactly what we think. We don't know right now. But right now, there are three guaranteed wins on the 2019 BYU football schedule. And beyond that, it is a toss-up. I see BYU going to a bowl game, but that's not good enough for this team. They need to get to at least seven uh, wins. And, and the, the issue is that you start... Tough. You Front loaded st- against Power Fives, which brings us to our stat of the day. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. In Independence, that's from 2011 to now. BYU's 9 and 14, that's 39%, versus Power Five teams in the first four games. Remember that 40% mark? 39, man. So if you play, you know, you win 40% versus Power Fives, which is fine. That's why I'm saying just don't load up on more than four, because then you go. One and three or two and two or whatever. Now, last year, BYU started the season three and one. That was a surprise. They went then went on to lose the next couple games and evened out at three and three. If BYU starts one and three, I think they'll finish seven and five in the regular season. Every win in the first four bumps that regular season win total up one game for me. So if BYU yeah. did go two and two, then I like Perhaps their chances eight. to go eight and four in the regular season. Yeah, if you win two of those first four, you should go to Toledo and win. Right, the confidence is off, different. Off a bye, yeah. you should go to South Florida, and you've got a good chance to win. Just win the first one. Hit it. Countdown to the youths. One hundred seven. So one hundred seven days away. Yes, one week one from week. one hundred. So next Tuesday. Hmm. Should we do confetti for that one? Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Please. Our cleanup no. crew is like, no, 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 no. No. Yeah. It is a mess. How do you define success, BYU Sports Nation? Because Jerem and I have clearly altered our expectations. Good grief. Now, if BYU, Jerem, were to win a fictional college football conference draft lottery, and this based on the NBA draft lottery tonight. Yeah. Who's going to get Zion? Is it going to be the Phoenix Suns and Jimmer? One heart and one mind. Or the Cleveland Cavaliers again? Who oh. seems to always win the NBA draft lottery? John Beeline, congrats. If BYU were to win a fictional college football conference draft lottery, Mm -hmm. which conference would you use the number one pick on and why? This answer is so clear to me, and I've said this before. It's the Pac-12. I want Larry Scott. I want to be in that conference. Invite us. Let's go. Regional ties, obviously. The most alumni uh, from BYU live in the States, in the West, obviously because of where BYU is. If if, uh, the church didn't move West, perhaps we'd be in the East, right? Could have been in the Big Ten, right? Uh, No. Current students at BYU, 56% of them are from the following four states, Utah, California, Idaho, Arizona. Now, I'm going to talk about something that no one's really discussed. BYU football has been really good at the wrong times. Arizona State won seven titles from 1969 to 77. Yep. They were invited with Arizona to the Pac-10. It was the Pac-8 in 1978. Had BYU been better earlier, they would have been invited to the Mm Pac-10 back then, I think. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the Big 12, perhaps. Um, Same thing in expansion. I think BYU was really good at the wrong times. I'm happy BYU was good at all. But uh, the Pac-12... It would become the Pac-14, right? You invite, I don't know, San Diego State, UNLV, Boy State, whatever. Would be awesome. That would be my choice. For me, it's the Big Ten, Jerem, and I'm going based on what BYU has done against the Big Ten historically, which is right on par. I know the game numbers are not the same, so the, the volume isn't as much, but BYU has been 
somewhat successful against Big Ten competition. The Cougars are 5-7-1 and one in 13 games all time against the Big Ten, including wins at Wisconsin and at Michigan State. Also, BYU won at Nebraska. Okay, all of this happened in the last six years, which is nuts, right? Yeah. In the independence era. These, these one-offs have gone really well. At Nebraska, at Michigan State, at Wisconsin. Now, BYU has not played. Yeah, well, at, at Michigan didn't work out too well. And at Ohio State wouldn't work. I'm out avoiding too well. that for convenience. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, it was nice to beat three and nine Michigan State. It was nice to beat five and seven Nebraska. And for it was sure. nice to beat eight and five Wisconsin. Yeah. Their only home loss of the season last yeah. year. No, if BYU, yeah, Big Ten would be fun. Regionally, it makes no sense. Well, I like the fun. travel partner of Nebraska. I, I think that would be fun. You could. They divided it up into a Big Ten West. And a I've Big never Ten thought East. travel in Nebraska and fun in the same sentence ever. Hey, hey. Red and blue <laughs> together as travel partners. I like it. I don't know. I just like the way that BYU matches up with the Big Ten Conference. Yeah, I think stylistically it's better. It's BYU's a better not fit. Speed, they're more power yes. right, with the kind of uh, players BYU can. Absolutely. Play. Tight sure. ends, running backs. Yeah. Our tennis team's like, what are we doing? Linebackers. What are we doing uh, at Michigan State in February? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I would take any Power 5 conference. If you said BYU can be in a Power 5, I don't care which one. But if we had our choice, which is the fictional mythological question of the day, Pac-12 makes the most sense. The Pac-12 sense. makes the most sense. Absolutely. The Big Ten, to me, would be the yeah. best stylistic fit yes. for BYU. And I would love for the Pac-12 to get over the bigotry and academic institution excuse. Get over it. It's about sports, and we all know it. Come yes. On. Our question of the day. We want you to answer this. If BYU was to win the college football conference draft lottery, which conference would you use the number one pick on and why? Jason Shepard, have you uh, chimed in yet? Our first response in <laughs> from at Lawless Republic. The SEC is like Zion Williamson. Even if logistically it doesn't make sense, you still choose them as the number one overall pick. So the Pac-12 is John ja Morant, which <laughs> would make more sense for your team, yeah. right? Depend- yeah. Like if you're Phoenix and you get the two, you pick, you know, you, you clearly get Ja, but you have an undersized backcourt anyway. Yeah. <laughs> It doesn't have RJ to be. Barrett, is R.J. Barrett a better pick because he's small forward? It doesn't have to be directly related yeah, to the exactly. personnel in this year's NBA draft. Or, but or if you want to go, they're fine. Or, you, or it's the Sun Belt. You stash some random European, whatever. Coming up, Between the Lines explores the secret to the baseball team's success this season. But first, another BYU men's basketball assistant coach making his show debut. Chris Burgess in yeah. Studio B. How would he rate Mark Pope's first pitch? This is BYU Sports Nation. Who knew he was a better shooter than Cody Figure? BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. West Coast Conference Player of the Week, Jackson Clough, and the top 25 BYU baseball team play at Utah tonight. Listen to the game on BYU Radio at 8 Eastern time. Are you watching that RPI, Jerem? You know I love me some RPI. RPI watch for when BYU baseball. no other metrics, look to the RPI. Yeah. <laughs> Remember when we the, the RPI went RIP in basketball? Yeah, you uh, you, you did a, an ode, a poem, a eulogy yes, of yeah, sorts. One of the more enjoyable moments we've had on this show. I love seeing the RPI die. It was very enjoyable. <laughs> it's a very much alive in baseball. Live from Studio B with your day-to-day BYU sports play-by-play, play-by-play rather. I am Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. And we welcome in now guest number one for the day, BYU basketball assistant coach Chris Burgess as we continue this car wash for yeah. all of the – Assistant coaches under Mark Pope. Welcome, man. Thank Chris. you. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. I'm excited to, I'm excited to be here. Are you ready to one-up Nick Robinson? Um, <laughs> that's going to be difficult, man. His shot, the Stanford shot, I don't know if I can one-up him regardless of what I do here. That, that shot is forever solidified him as the top dog. Well, that, hey, that was a heck of a shot. At least you beat Cody Feger in a shooting contest to get the desired <laughs> office in the basketball annex. I did. And again, Nick wasn't present, and that was, that was completely calculated. <laughs> Um, and, and I got Cody. Uh, I, I got Cody. He thinks we're going to do every three months. There's no way. Every three months? There's no way. I, I've got it for at least a mission, a two-year mission. I've yeah. got it for at least okay. two-year mission. All right. A, a mission trip. Yeah, yeah. as we like to call it here, jokingly. Uh, what's the last month been like for this staff, and how would you define it? Um, madness in a good way, right? Your head is spinning a little bit. You're, the number one thing is, like, reaching out to the current players. Right. And making sure they get because it's 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 a change for us and a change for them, too. And so we're going to be thrown right into workouts. So reaching out to these guys, bring them to your office so that we can get to know them 
so that we can coach them and they can start to trust you, right? You got to start cultivating relationships and build this trust. So that was number one. Number two is like the 2019 recruiting class. What do we need? Who are we going after? So we start recruiting, right? And so that was number two. And then we're also throwing in, I think I was hired Wednesday or Thursday. And then Friday, we're on the road at the EYBL, the Adidas, right? And all these different things. And so it's like, all right, what do we need? What are we going to watch? Right. And then the other thing is, is just kind of getting everything situated in terms of transition of like the benefits and the HR and all these different things. And and so it's been so smooth. And that's kind of a reflection on BYU itself and the university and how 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 we've just felt at home, how they've taken care of us. They've been over backwards. They gave us a nice office with a window. So they've done all these things well, to make us did, feel yeah. nice. And warm. You earned a nice <laughs> office with a window. Yeah. So, yeah. But yeah it's, it's been smooth. Um, I feel at home now. I feel like I've, I feel like I'm situated. Um, I love these guys that I have on the team. I love them. I, I think that um, they got a chip on their shoulder, and w- w- Coach Pope does well with guys like that. Yeah, I feel like the YMCA. We call it the YMCA, the BYU Marriott Center Annex. Yeah, um, has been like a beehive yes. of activity. It's yeah. it's crazy, and you got transfers coming in, and you're dealing with a lot of personnel changes so how has the reception of the guys that are sticking around been to the new coaching staff unbelievable um really we know some of these kids already right we you know being at utah valley or being in the state um you know some of these kids but the reception i'm telling you from day one and then the first workout has been really positive Uh, like i said they have a chip on their shoulder but these guys want to win Right, and the guys that are there, they want to win. They want to go to the NCAA tournament. They want to listen. They've heard some of them know Coach Pope, where they were recruited, you know, four years ago or whatever, or their, you know, family members or brothers have played for them. Um, and there's just this, been this positive, um, like, coach me. I want to be coached. Um, I want to be in this gym. I want to get better. So it's been really positive. These guys are easy to coach. Like, they really are. Now, we haven't had any wins or losses. There's been no playing time and minutes distributed yet. So, of course, everyone's on feeling really good. But I, I, from the get-go, like, I love kids that are looking in the eye when you coach them, doing what you ask, wanting to try. Yes, sir. Um, we love those kids. We love those kids. And so it's been good. Can we still expect uh, players to be announced that could join the roster this year? Is that still in flux? At this um, point? Yeah. Um, it still is. There's still a couple um, players that we're working on. I don't know how much I can talk about it, but there are a couple more guys we're working on to finalize this thing. And then once they're on board, um, let's go. Let, let's get these summer workouts going, and let's get ready for the, the Italy trip in August. And man, let's let, let's 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 go. Let's go. We're ready. We're ready to roll. So a couple more. You've worked with and played for some outstanding basketball coaches, yeah. notably Mike Krzyzewski at Duke, yeah, Rick okay. Majerus at Utah, <laughs> and now coaching with Mark Pope at yeah. Utah Valley and, and now BYU. You so, put Mark Pope in that same category? Wow. I, I, yes. Well, that's pretty yes. awesome. It's the next one, right? Yeah. Okay, it's that's the next great. one. Now, Mark, obviously. You've got Indian Hills, right? Yeah. That's right. And that's, Coach that's Wardenburg, Wardenburg, man. Coach Wardenburg. Coach Wardenburg. And he did some great things. Yeah. yeah. Great. Um, how much of your coaching philosophy is based on guys like coach K and coach Majerus and now Mark Pope. Um, I think the game has changed a lot and the kids are different generation from, for example, Rick Majerus. There was, I call fear in the gym. You just played with constant fear and you did everything (laughs) right. And you played hard because you were, you were so, you were just in fear of this guy. Coach K, there was there was some fear, but there was always, you know, everything in terms of in terms of the way we played, everything was the aggressive. You were always the aggressor, offensively, defensively. We got up the line, we denied everything on ball screens, we hard show in the post, we three quarter front, and you just knew that, right? We were gonna be the aggressive. You can do that because you have nine McDonald's All Americans, right? You yeah. can't. Where Utah was uh, again, there was fear, but everything, every game plan and every player you played was just different. Right, how we game plan it was everything was different. This guy's a shooter, non shooter, um, you know, so it went that way. Coach Pope is all about joy in the gym, right? Which is completely different. And this generation thrives off that. Hmm. Now he's still gonna push you, he's still gonna challenge you, he's gonna get on you. But we always, as we meet in the staff before we go to practice, he's like, All right, boys, let's bring some joy to this gym, right? Because these kids, you gotta find a way to keep them motivated. Right, you got to find a way to keep them competitive, and you got to find a way where they because it's a long season, and these some of these kids are married, some of these kids got academic things, and so how how do we get them for those two to three hours on the court? How do we bring joy to the gym? And it's our job as a, as a coaching staff. So that's the difference. I, I don't think Majerus was going to his staff being like, guys, let's bring joy to the gym, right? You want to do that, <laughs> right? It was uh, there was like you could feel his presence as he was walking down the Huntsman, like, uh oh, coach is here, and you just be right. And I don't think guys can play like that anymore, right? I think it's a different generation 
where these guys, um, you talk about joy and having fun out there on the floor, and I think there's something to it. But coach's thing about having fun is you work so hard, you compete so much in practice. When the game comes, the fun is competing against that opponent. Look him in the eye like, let's go, right? And so winning, winning is what brings, brings uh, the ultimate fun of this game out. And so that's the difference. I think Coach Pope is as good as it comes in terms of the college game and the NBA game and kind of bringing them together. He played with arguably two of the greatest shooters all time in Ray Allen, Reggie Miller, right? I, uh, hey, Steph Curry, Clay, what they do is amazing, but it's a different game. Um, and so his mentality with these shooters is like, He'd be like a guy would be over five, over six. He'd be like, man, Reggie Miller would come t- during a timeout with the Pacers. He'd be like, coach, I'm like, hey, you're over six, keep shooting. He's like, man, I don't even know if I'm hot yet. I got to make my first one, right? And so that's the mentality he brings with that NBA, you know, aspect of the game and in coaching. He's like, keep shooting these open shots. They are not mistakes when you miss. Shoot the ball, and guys are gonna love doing that. Guys are gonna love as long as you play hard, enjoy the game, compete, work hard. You're gonna love playing for this guy. And in the past couple of days, there was a recommendation to the uh, playing rules committee of potentially moving the three-point line back. What do you think of that potential move? June 5th, they'd have to. Keep moving it back. It's harder for us bigs, but keep (laughs) moving it back. Um, I know Cody would like to move that line back. No, listen, it is what it is. We're adapting as close as we can to the, the the FIBA game and the NBA game. These kids, even at the high school level, the threes they're shooting, might as well move it back, right? I think percentages will dip a little bit, but it also... It's going to eliminate some shooters out there that need that extra couple inches or whatever it is forward, and mainly your fives and some of your threes. Um, but I'm all for it. Right? This game, the way these kids shoot this day and the work they put in and, and all the hours they put in just shooting the ball, shooting the ball, shooting the ball, threes, is so much different, and, and it's an era where, like, I don't think it's a big deal. I really don't. I would love it for spacing. Yeah, I think exactly. It'd be good. Yeah. Spacing, because this is all, like, ball screens is taken over. Right, the NBA, we're, like NBA is always two years ahead of college. Like we usually, what they start doing, we adapt in college a couple years later, and it's all about spacing, switching, getting the mismatch you want. And so that NBA or that college three is like you said, it's going to space for these bigs to roll, these bigs to hit the corner. I call it the Draymond pass. You know when Draymond rolls, he finds guys yeah, cutting. Yeah. So it's going to allow that, and right, and that's what we teach with our bigs and our guards. Is like, hey, when you roll and you feel pressure, you make the right play. Don't put it on the floor and try to power up and cause an inefficient shot or a turnover. And so that's going to really help. Chris Burgess here with us on BYU Sports Nation, BYU basketball assistant coach. You never played at BYU, but yeah. there's obviously history for you yeah. here and your family. Wait, and what? Specifically, <laughs> you got put in a weird situation that uh, I think you handled with a lot of class. But Roger Reed said some tough things to you during your recruitment period. Where are you emotionally with all of that now? Because it happened such a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, really positive. Um, uh, I've been close with the Reed, uh, uh, Randy, Robbie, and Darren for a long time. Um, I played pickup with them the last four years. I've gotten to know them. You can get to know someone really well playing pickup with them. Amen to that. Yeah, so yeah. I've gotten really yeah. close. I've gotten really close to these guys, and I was able to kind of see Roger for the first time when Coach Pope got the job here over there at the Annex, and and I got to embrace him. And he told me I lo- he loved me, and it was it was just this kind of full circle feel good moment. I know that's cliche, but um, it meant more than he more than people understand because you know it's a situation that none of us wanted and. Um, my relationship with them when they were recruiting me was as good as it can get, right? I loved it. I loved how they cultivated with the relationships with me and the way they recruited me and talked to me and just made like a 16, 17-year-old kid, kid feel like golden, right? And so how it all turned out, I couldn't, couldn't be happier how we've embraced him here because he's done so much for BYU in his coaching days. Um, I've gotten really close with their sons I've told you about. So Randy sent me a nice text message yesterday being, hey, it's so good for the public to understand how close we've become privately, right? And so um, I got nothing but love for them. Um, I can't wait to get Randy here at a game. You know, and, and Robbie and Darren, for them to understand the impact they had as former players and the impact their dad had as a former coach. And for me to be part of that is, is you know, people say full circle, which I believe, but it's more, it's more of a, a feel-good moment for me where I have some peace in my life during a, during a time, I, I, you know, it was tough. Right, and so I have some peace, and, and, and credit goes to Coach Pope, Coach Reed, and Randy, uh, Robbie, and Darren. Great well, stuff. Well, it's great to have you, not only for yeah. sort of this part of the story, but you're a good coach. Yeah. So we're excited well, to have you here. Well, I appreciate welcome, it. Welcome, the jury's out back. on that, but I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> we would love for you to sign our Sailor Kook flag. Yeah, um, 
to officially welcome you Thank yeah. you. to BYU Sports Nation. And we have this thing called BYU Sports Nation Karma. Basically, you get good luck. So oh. good luck in recruiting and all that. Yes. And, and you can set, let's see, Yoli Childs, I, I believe. Coach Pope. I, I mean, I'm, you can go I'm higher than Pope if you out. want. <laughs> You're already higher than Fieger, probably. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love Coach. Oh, okay, coming stuff. up, he had two Grand Slams last week. Brock Hale's in studio on a game day against Utah. Listen, BYU baseball deserves some more publicity, so we're going to go between the lines with the Batcats once again. This is BYU Sports Nation. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. On the latest BYU Sports Nation right now, what pictures from BYU Athletics are album cover worthy? Check it out on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and the YouTube. Let's keep it rolling with another look at today's headlines. Jeff Goodman of Stadium Sports reporting Yoli Childs. Shocker! will not return to BYU and will remain in the NBA draft. We've known this for a while, but it's again official. Childs told BYUSN in an interview back on March 28th. Yeah, well, I I think what's different here is this is post no combine invite reaffirming it because there was this idea that, hey, maybe, but he's not he's not coming. Who created that? He gone logistics. The (laughs) fact that he still could. Uh, Jackson Clough is the Collegiate Baseball Newspaper National Player of the Week, as well as the West Coast Conference Player of the Week. Batted 562, six extra base hits last week. BYU at Utah tonight, 80, 80 Eastern on BYU Radio. Brock Hale will join us in the upcoming segment. We'll ask Brock if he's upset about not being the West Coast Conference Player of the Week after hitting two grand slams. Two grand slams. <laughs> so you have to hit three to what? be the West Coast Conference Player of the Week. What? What's going on there? Mary Lake makes the 25-player cut-down roster for Volleyball Nations League representing Team USA. She's one of two liberos on the squad. It will be cut down to 14 for competition next week in Bulgaria. Additionally, BYU women's volleyball in the recruiting class come in at number four. That is a program best up from the previous high of eight. From PrepVolleyball.com, well done, Heather Olmstead and staff. The men's golf team is on the course at the Pullman NCAA Regional. Currently, BYU in the number one spot yeah. at 14 under. They're six under today. They're on holes three through seven right now individually. Carson Lundell, second place, seven under. He's one under through three today. The next highest coup, Rhett Rasmussen and Peter Quest tied for 12th. So BYU currently in first place in the regional. They need to finish in the top five to advance to the NCAA championship. They did that last year. Which is wild. Expectations were that there would be a little bit of a drop-off, but Carson Lundell is a guy. Here we go mission. again. Keep it going. Yeah, there's a, that's a good team. Man. Absolutely. And Peter Quest right now just kind of lurking behind, waiting to make his move. Yeah, when he's the guy that's lurking, yeah. watch out. Who's, he's a top five golfer. In watch NCAA. out. Rhett Rasmussen, Rhett the Jet. Carson Lundell, Peter Quest leading the charge. Really good stuff. Good luck to Bruce Brockbank and his squad as they continue on. We'll update you later on where they're at. Yeah, surely. Uh, Perhaps they deserve some more publicity after what they have been up to, Jerem. BYU Baseball, meanwhile, nationally ranked number 24. They are in first place of the West Coast Conference. Awesome. And have centered in once again on our focus in Between the Lines. BYU Sports Nation presents Between the Lines. Doobie, doobie, doobie. I'm Brock Hale. I'm from Mesa, Arizona, and I play outfield. I'm Mitch McIntyre. I'm from Stansbury, Utah, and I'm an outfielder and pitcher. Hi, I'm DJ McNeil. I'm from Mountain Grove, Missouri, and I'm an infielder. And this is In Between the Lines. Brock, do you serve your mission in Santiago, Chile? Tell us your most embarrassing baseball story in Spanish. Ooh, he doesn't remember. One. I don't even speak Spanish anymore. No español. Um, uh, estábamos en Hawaii. Yo estaba corriendo. <laughs> And como muy, muy rápido, nadie me dijo nada. Pegué un pared como muy rápido y la persona pe- pegó un home run inside the park. Yeah, when you hit the wall. Muy malo. In Hawaii? <laughs> yeah. You got knocked out. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much what happened. Yeah, how do you say knocked out in Spanish? <laughs> okay, that would be good. I think this one's a good one. Mitch, you played QB in high school. Do you think you could go back to your glory days and throw a long ball? Oh, for sure. Okay, this is for you, Jaron Hall. Ready? Go! (laughs) Excellent. Okay. DJ, you used to be a team roper. Do you think you could use those roping skills to tie up one of your teammates? Absolutely. No question about it. It might be a little rusty, but I could do it. 
<laughs> Got him, motherfucker. Hey. <laughs> Let's see this one. Which of the three of you would win in a game of bocce b baseball? Who? Me? Absolutely not. I mean, we had to get this explained to us before, and after it was explained, I definitely know I would win, so. Um, yeah. I'd like to you would agree like to, to disagree on that. The only way you two disagree could win. Disagree to agree, I don't know. The only way you two could win if it's if I set out or something. <laughs> okay, so the point of bocce ball is that we're gonna take these bats, take these balls, we're all gonna hit them, and we're gonna try to get the closest to that stool over there. One that gets the closest wins. All right, here we go. Oh, that wasn't bad. That's not terrible. It'll run. That's gonna be tough to beat. Honestly, oh, no. that is gonna be tough to beat. Okay. Okay, fine. Finesse it one time, I don't know. It's not bad. It's not, not gonna run. I don't think you guys are gonna beat me though. That's not hard enough though. I called it in the beginning. Oh, first. Yeah. DJ. 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 Look at that, dude. Look at that. Look at that, dude. I'm done wow, you're now. like Ichiro Suzuki over here. I've been sandbagging. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> a win. And it comes down to win. this. There's no, I think I got the two closest so far, so. That was pretty cool. Oh. <laughs> that was not even. He's the worst. <laughs> the worst. Slap hitter right there. All right, should we go check the results here? That, that one's yours. Oh, I think that one might be closer. Thank you. I win. That's all, folks. Well, I was the winner, as predicted. Um, well, thanks for joining us, guys. We had a fun time answering questions and playing bocce ball with you guys. Um, this is In Between the Lines, and go Cougs. Go Cougs. Go Cougs. And when you hit two oh, grand nice. slams, yeah. you get to do stuff like that. Oh, absolutely. Nicely done by those guys. It's hard to uh, recall in Spanish. Uh, oh, on the spot. On the spot. That's good. I, I didn't know what uh, Inside the Park would be in <laughs> Spanish. I don't know what it is in Portuguese. Probably <laughs> oh, reminds the same me, thing. It reminds what is me it in of Korean? The, inside the park. <laughs> nice. Uh, seriously. Like it's, inside it's, the park. We, we call it Konglish. Yeah. 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 Okay, very inside nice. Inside the park. Home on. I wish you would have done that. Uh, during the season. Coming up, Patrick Fishburne is a step closer to earning a spot in the U.S. Open. But first, we just heard from him in Spanish. He's Brock here. Hale will be speaking in English in Studio B. Well, we'll see. How do you say two grand slams in Spanish, Brock? Think about that during the break. This is BYU <laughs> Sports Nation. Why wasn't he the player of the week in the conference? Between the Lines is presented by Tim Daly Ford and the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Attention Taylor Swift, Saturday, May 18th, will be live from the BYU Fan Fest in Nashville, Tennessee, baby, 1 to 3 Eastern time this Saturday. Satake, Pope, many others. We cannot be more excited about this opportunity to go to Nashville this Saturday. Is this Taylor Swift's official invitation? I think it is, yeah. Taylor. Please come to the BYU Fan Fest. <laughs> How fun would that be? <laughs> Any star would be amazing. Any Nashville yeah. country yeah. star. No, You're all was... invited. We, we uh, are very excited invited. to uh, see everybody and uh, be in Nashville. Clip yeah. it off. Uh, yeah, clip this off. Send it to T-Swift on Twitter along with the other 17 million tweets that she's going to receive today. She's going to see it today. Maybe she'll see it. One of her social media interns will be like, what's this? <laughs> Yeah, come experience BYU Sports Nation. She's like, what? <laughs> She's like, get out of here. Welcome back Just to... Mention a Jonas Brother. Maybe it'll get her attention. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back to BYUSN with our question of the day. To write a song about it. It's NBA Lottery Day, Lottery Draft Pick Day. If BYU was to win the college football conference draft lottery, which conference would you use the number one pick with and why? At Caleb underscore Smith says, I'd love to say the Big 12. However, the future is uncertain there. My number one pick would be the Big 10 because it has a good batch of teams and it has a wide-stretching conference for further exposure. Plus, imagine seeing BYU play at the Big House and at the Horseshoe. We saw BYU well, play at the Big House. We've seen that. I don't want to see it again. Was I'm good. Not good? I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Check. Next. <laughs> Join the conversation 24-7 on social media using the hashtag BYUSN. In Studio B, once again, friend of the program, a man who hit two grand slams two. in his weekend series against, against San Francisco, Brock Hale. Welcome back to the show, Brock. Thanks for having me. Hey, how was last week, man? 
You know, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Enjoyed it thoroughly. Yeah. Your last home series. So you wanted to go out a winner. You wanted to go out well. You hit two grand salamis, dude. That's about as yeah. good as it could go. Yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't script it any better, I guess, you know. I've never done that in my career. I don't think I've hit two grand slams in a weekend. So to do it senior weekend is like, it just feels good, yeah. You had one, I think, previously at BYU, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah that was like Did you hit me in high school or? Um, honestly, it's been a long time. I don't know. Can't remember. I, I'm sure I did. There were like point. six, but you just don't. There want to have say. been so many. I can't. Uh, no, remember. not <laughs> not even like that. But yeah, I don't know. It's been a long time. I, maybe I did. Maybe I did. I don't know. Okay, you're on deck. You get to the plate. It's bases loaded. In these situations, are you swinging for the fences? Are you just trying to hit it hard? What's your approach? No, I mean, I think the biggest thing is like you just want to stay calm. You know, a lot of times when you get bases loaded or something, like, especially with two outs. I mean, obviously you want to hit these guys in, but it can get kind of nerve-wracking sometimes because you want to do that. Or if you're, like, thinking about hitting a grand slam, usually it doesn't happen. So the biggest thing is, like, you just want to, you know, do your job, get on base somehow, drive some people in. And I was just fortunate enough to hit a, hit a grand slam. Now, you bring up the two-out factor. BYU scores 16 of the 17 runs on Saturday with two outs on the board. That is nuts, including your grand slam. Why is this team clutch compared to other teams that you've competed with and on? Yeah, I don't, you know, it's just one of those things. It's um, something that I definitely felt my sophomore year when we went to the regional is um, that there's not one person necessarily that you have to rely on that's going to, you know, pick everyone up that has to, like, carry the team. I mean, there you look through one through nine, there's always guys that are getting clutch hits that are, you know, just kind of unsung heroes that you, you kind of talk about week to week. So, I am I mean, obviously Jackson Clough's is been super consistent we've had a lot of guys be consistent but I don't think that there's necessarily one guy that's kind of carried the team it's been a huge team effort um on our part so it's it's been amazing to see that every guy kind of has your back if you don't get the job done someone else is we're glad a BYU guy got the West Coast Conference Player of the Week but you hit two grand slams and you didn't get the Player of the Week that was a little weird but it was Jackson so it's okay yeah I <laughs> I mean Jackson had a great week I yeah. mean I don't. I don't really care about that stuff, honestly. Next time, so. hit three. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it. yeah, maybe. Two's not good enough, right? Yeah, three grand slams. We're competing with Jackson, <laughs> but two, not enough. It's okay though. He's he's a great player. He had a great week. So, what was it like playing at Miller Park for the final time? Um, I don't know. It was weird. It was kind of normal. Like you kind of feel. I mean, with my family there and stuff, and I think they kind of make you feel that that it's a senior weekend. But at the same time, I was telling everyone, I was like, this is weird, just because. I know we got to go win at Santa Clara next week, or I guess this week, and you know we got a conference tournament to play. So there's still a lot of games left to play. So to sit there and be like, "Oh man, this is my last game," I'm just like, "Well, I got a lot of games left." So less emotional than yeah. You yeah. experienced BYU's first NCAA regional in 15 years in your sophomore season. Now you're in position, if you don't win the West Coast Conference Tournament, maybe to be an at-large, but I know you want to go and win it, earn that auto bid, and get back for a second time in four years. That's pretty wild considered it had been so long for BYU. So how has that been for you as you sum up your entire BYU career? Yeah, I mean, just being able to do that that first time was obviously a milestone. That's not something that... I guess a lot of people within BYU baseball have been able to do. So to do that two times throughout my four years here would be something that, you know, I would never forget. But I think this time it would be a lot different just because I think going there for the first time, it was kind of like uncharted territory. You didn't really know what to expect. It was kind of like uh, we were happy to be there. And so when we face teams like Cal State Fullerton and Stanford that expect to be there and that, that have been there, um, I think we can take a whole new mentality into that regional this year. So I think that's the thing I'm most excited for to um if we were to play enough play well enough to get into a regional is being able to know that I've been there before and kind of what it takes to beat these these better teams. The fact that this team is in position to do that is really impressive given how last year went. Twenty two mm-hmm. wins, there was an overhaul uh in the off season. What are some of the characteristics uh that have led this team to this success so far? Yeah, I think uh one of the biggest things has just been kind of just setting the culture from the very beginning. Um, the, I think my past three years we've kind of selected captains, and, and they've done a great job. I I mean, they've always been good. But this year there was nine or ten seniors, and we just kind of took it upon ourselves that, hey, like we're going to create this culture. starts with Coach Littlewood, and then it comes through us, and then we basically feed it down into these new guys and these younger guys. 
And to tip my hat off, it's it's been the younger guys and these new guys that have come in that have totally bought into this culture. And it's not anything I guess new that we're you know we're preaching to these guys or anything like that. It's been it's been really the mentality and the culture of winning. Um, so yeah, I mean these guys have really bought into it, and you see what that can really do for a team. And and you know so I think the biggest thing too is that all these guys on our team we all get along. I consider every one of these guys my friends. And the camaraderie, it's just such a tight-knit group of guys. So, yeah, I think that's the biggest thing for us that's going for us. Even if you're roped? Even if I'm roped by DJ. <laughs> Even if I'm roped. I still have rope burns from that, by the way. Wow. Yeah, on my ankle. Wow. Yeah, he did it so well. He burned me with that rope. <laughs> he, he burned you. Yeah. Bro, great to catch up, man. Uh, you've hit 340-plus your entire career. You are the pattern of consistency. Um, congratulations on everything, man. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, good luck tonight against Utah. We didn't even ask about Utah. Good luck luck tonight. Oh, by the way, Utah tonight. Go beat Utah. Yeah, Yeah. thank you. I appreciate it. it. Okay, thanks. Coming up, a BYU freshman leads the men's golf team in the NCAA region. Plus, BYU Sports Nation says goodbye to one of our favorite people on the BYU women's basketball staff. Details in the whip. This is BYU Sports Nation. Carmen DeBrockhill on the team. Oh, yeah. Shout out to today's guest, BYU basketball assistant coach Chris Burgess and BYU baseball star senior Brock Hale hit two grand slams in last weekend's series. The show's on demand via the podcast and the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. Let's whip it. It's time for the Cougar Whip Around. Cougars in the draft. Jeff Goodman reports Yoli Childs uh, told Stadium Sports he will not return to BYU and will remain in the NBA draft. Baseball. Jackson Clough, the collegiate baseball newspaper national player of the week for a second time this season. West Coast Conference player of the week after batting 562. Is that good? Six extra base hits last week. BYU plays at Utah tonight at 8 Eastern, 6 Mountain, live on BYU Radio. Volleyball. Mary Lake has been selected to the USA Volleyball Nations League 25-player roster. She has a chance to be selected among the 14 players who will travel to Bulgaria for the beginning of the tournament next week. Track and field. BYU men's track and field drops a spot in the rankings to number four. But, hey, top five for a second straight week. Tomorrow's list of qualifiers for the NCAA preliminaries will be released. And I believe the women are up to number 11 for the second time this year. Yes. Golf. Carson Lundell led BYU men's golf to fourth place after day one of the Pullman Invitational. Currently BYU in first place. Two strokes ahead of Georgia Tech. Uh, BYU shot nine under today so mm. far. Individually, Carson Lundell in first place by himself. Two under today, eight under for the tournament so far. And Rhett Rasmussen flies up from 12th place to fourth place. He shot four under today. But Rhett, Patrick Fishburne finished second at three under at a U.S. Open qualifying tournament at Riverside Country Club in Provo, Utah. He advances to the regional qualifier, which will decide who moves on to the U.S. Open at Pebble Beach. How cool is that? That's very cool. Back the, to you at seven. The, the ginger quake. Today's rise and shout-outs. Up first, Dan Nielsen, longtime BYU basketball, One women's basketball assistant coach, got himself a new job. He is the new head coach at Utah Valley University. He said yesterday in a tweet he could not be more excited. We are thrilled for him. As much as we hate to see him go, we are thrilled that Dan has an opportunity to be a head coach. He's been tutored and brought along by Jeff Judkins. He's been at it for a very long time. We've been tutoring him for a long time. He's before. worked so hard to get to a position like this and can't wait to see what uh, he can do with the Wolverines and the WAC. Will he be the Mark Pope for whenever Jeff Judd Judkins retires? Yeah, who, yeah. Who, who, I don't who know. Might, might as well uh, think like that, you know? I mean, he's, if when Juddy leaves... He would be a name that would naturally come into the conversation. My rise and shout out goes to Carson Lundell, freshman golfer, currently in first place in the Pullman Regional. Uh, Went on a mission to Tucson. He's back from Alpine. I don't think was expected to be a major, major, major contributor on this team, but he has been awesome. Yeah. And now he's in first place in the NCAA Regional, which is pretty cool. Three top 20 finishes. Uh, Now he leads BYU in the biggest tournament of the season. All West Coast Conference honorable mention. That's, I mean, coming off of a mission, when you haven't been able to play golf for two years and do yeah. this. So we put gyms in churches. You know what we don't put in? <laughs> putting golf greens. simulators. Putting <laughs> greens. So pretty impressive. Question of the day. If BYU were to win the college football conference draft lottery, this based on the NBA draft lottery tonight, 
Which conference would you use the number one pick on and why? Our elite voice of the day, presented by Sundance Mountain Resort, celebrating 50 years. Colonel underscore James 83. The geographical slash rivalry fit would be the Pac-12. Yeah. Kick Colorado out. I mean, come on. <laughs> However, given the state of politics in that conference, I would say the Big 12. Why? Because we need each other. Now up on the... BYU had the six Infinity Stones to never mind. Oh, snap. Sorry to Dennis Pitta. We ran out of time. Conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Use the hashtag BYU. For Jerem, I am Spencer. Shout out to Chris Hale. BYU baseball airs live tonight on BYU Radio against Utah at 8 Eastern, 6 Mountain. Go Cougs. Yeah, beat the Utes. Let's go. 107.